Hi, this is Patty in Escondido, California. I'm in zone 10A. And today I just wanted to take you on a tour of my succulent garden. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with succulents, um, but I do have a, a very mature variety here. And um, most of these are probably about 30 years old. Uh, when we moved here, it was about nine years ago. And um, I, I really haven't made any changes or done any, any maintenance to this garden. Um, other than plant a few extra things on the uh, bottom tier here. But one thing that I did do is I did plant a uh, passion fruit vine. And if you look, you can probably get a good shot of this uh, trunk that has wound around the back corner post of the trellis here. And that one plant that was in a one gallon container has actually grown all the way up and all the way across and it actually did that in probably six months <laughs> it was um, extremely uh, fast how much it covered um, now since it's really uh, like covered the whole top and I, I periodically will trim it but I do need to um, get up there and really thin it out I've noticed that we haven't gotten as much fruit as we were initially so I think it's just got too much foliage and I need to uh, trim it back so that the energy will go to producing flowers and fruit. But now that I'm talking about the flowers and the fruit, this is an example of the passion fruit flower. And you can see it's very exotic looking. And um, when this plant is in its full glory, they just drip down and they hang and they're just gorgeous. Then they produce a fruit like this. And um, this is... Um, a little bit small like I said it's not really producing um, what I saw at first it's kind of gotten small I think again I have to trim it back but um, this is how it looks and then um, when they shrivel up like this this is when it's actually ready to eat and um, they are edible <laughs> and when you uh, open them up it's kind of like a, a gooey slimy seed um, fruit, but it's actually really tasty. It tastes kind of like um, grapefruit to me. And you can top it on your yogurt. Um, it's very nutritious. Um, you can also make smoothies out of it. Um, but if you're like me, you just do this. It's really good. I like it. So anyways, that's the passion fruit vine. Then um, I have... I did plant the hydrangea. This is um, really, I just um, propagated it myself. I had a mature uh, hydrangea that I, um, I stuck in some root hormone and um, started it and got it, the roots going. And then I planted it back here. And it seems pretty happy. It's got some buds. Um, it's gonna be a real large pom-pom type hydrangea with the light pink flowers. Um, this is a ice plant that um, just grows these really uh, pretty little flowers on it. They're pink or dark purple. They're very cute. It's not in full bloom right now. Um, this is a type of a succulent. They call it an anemone. Anium. Anium. And an anium, um, its characteristic is it's kind of like a rose uh, shape. And they can get very large because you can see in contrast to my hand how large these get. And they kind of like will make one big one and then on the side you'll get another one and on the side you'll get more. So you just it just keeps growing and growing. Here's a, a really good example of a very large one. Um, they look really pretty um, in floral arrangements. Um, you know, if you put, they're like the main attraction in a floral arrangement if you, you know, can get them to stand up right. They're, um, you'd have to support them because they're pretty heavy. Uh, over here, I have a geranium. Geraniums like to be deadheaded. Uh, when you deadhead them, it helps them to produce more uh, flowers. And um, these, I also just started from sticking a branch in the ground and it just, uh, just like this, I would take it and clean off some of the branches to scar it up. And then what I do is I just stick it into the ground and then keep it watered and it will grow its own little plant. 
This is um, English Ivy. And this is something that I didn't plant either. And it's just, it just has always been here. I haven't had to really do anything with it except for trim it back when it gets too long. I also love to use this in arranging uh, flowers. I like to drape it um, on my um, mantle. Um, I put it on tables. It's just really pretty. You can make wreaths out of it. Just like, it's almost instant. So, <laughs> um, then this is called Gollum Jade. This is uh, another succulent um, that is kind of unusual looking. Um, it, it has like these little tubes and the tubes are kind of hollow. Um, they look like little appendages, like little fingers to me. <laughs> um, this one is called Jade, Jade uh, Flowers. Um, you can see how old these are by the size of their stalks. I mean, that is incredibly large. It looks like a elephant leg to me. <laughs> um, and then over here, I did plant this um, really lovely um, <laughs> camellia. Yeah, I planted this camellia here. Um, it actually does really well in this area. It has a ton of flowers when it's in bloom and they're bright pink uh, fuchsia color. It's a really nice show. Um, this is my bougainvillea. Bougainvilleas are really this one's kind of a um more of an orangey uh color when it's in bloom and um, right now it's uh probably in shock because i cut it back quite a bit i was really aggressive with it but you can see it's trying to come back but this thing has been here for ages also um the people that lived here before they just put the pot up here and rested it but it actually root it down in and there's no way I'm going to move this out unless I get my saws all out. <laughs> so um, I do really like it when it's in bloom. It's really pretty. It's just uh, one of those kind of plants that um, you have to be very careful because it's got uh, really, uh, really rough spikes on it that um, will tear up your arms and it's not fun to prune. Uh, this one's a kind of a fun plant. Uh, this one is called um, elephant ear, pig's. or pig's ear. I'm sorry, pig's ear, and um, it's uh, it's really unusual looking. That's it has nice white little flowers when it's in bloom. Looks like the honeybees also were attracted to it. Um, over here, uh, this is a mature uh, rose garden that I didn't plant. Um, and it needs to be pruned a little bit. I can see a lot of spent uh, blooms, but when it is in bloom, it's got the most beautiful coral colored roses. And I use this quite a bit, this rose, cause I get a lot of them. I mean, it's just full of buds everywhere, just everywhere. And this, I uh, love to make floral arrangements with this as well. Um, this is the same, the same, same rose bush. This is a wild uh, rose. Um, that is just kind of trailing all over the place. And I, um, I just trimmed it back a, probably about a month ago, but it's got lots of buds on it and it adds a lot of color. And then behind the deck, um, which I just want to take a second to show you the view out our back, our back deck. It's really beautiful. It, it looks over all of Escondido. And at nighttime, it's just really pretty. I have uh, some lights on the deck and it just really is a nice place to sit and enjoy a glass of wine. Uh, we have an, um, more roses. This one's um, a really pretty orange and yellow rose. Um, and just take a look at all these blooms. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. Um, and it's just very, very, uh, it just grows so easy. And, and this one is a, a red rose bush. And look at the stems on that. I mean, I have long stem roses, guys. Beautiful. Okay. This one is really beautiful as well. Just pink and yellow roses. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? 
Love it. Okay. And then another red rose bush. So pretty. And this is one that I recently looks a little bit uh, like I need to trim off some of these ends here. Um, but this one I just recently moved from the front to the back. Um, I made some room in the front for some different plants because they weren't getting enough sun. So I think it'll be happy right here. It seems to get quite enough, uh, you know, enough sun for them to obviously thrive. So I decided to move it here. This is um, another uh, little plant that I decided to plant underneath to really, uh, it's gonna be like a ground cover. It's a proven winner and it's going to um, cover the bottom here and hopefully help me to keep back on the weeds. Um, I don't recall the name of this right now, but I'll put it up on the screen for you. Um, got another one right there. I planted about four in the in this bed here, and um, they were little tiny, probably three inch pots, and they've already like really put on some growth. This is a uh, a type of sedum. It's called sedum adolfi, and um, I just think this is really pretty. And I, um, if you, I mean, you, there's an unending amount of starts here you just put this in the ground and you'll grow more of them they're just really amazing how they just take root like that uh here's an old fire pit that um i changed into a um, planter this is my boxwood i started from a cutting and um they seem to be a little bit resistant to um starting from cuttings. I mean, I, I probably did about 30 cuttings and I got maybe two that actually rooted. Um, but I'm still working on it. I'll keep you posted if I figure out what I'm doing wrong um, so that I can share with you how to start your own boxwoods. Um, now this is a Supertunia snowdrift and once this gets mature, it should actually fill out this whole planter here. Um, against this wall, I planted more succulents, and these I simply took from Mary to pay, took from Peter to pay to Paul, Mary, <laughs> took from Peter to pay Mary, Paul. however it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then this is another, uh, tree that I just found a volunteer coming up. I have a coral tree that I'll show you another time. But coral trees are enormous trees. They grow really fast and they have these really pretty red um, blooms on them. Um, the stalk is pretty interesting. It's got um, a lot of spikes on it. The problem with the coral tree is they're such rapid growers that when they get, when they really put on a lot of um, leaves, they, and they, if they get wet, they'll snap off and the, the branches are really heavy they're actually kind of um, fibrous inside. They kind of look like cork or, or uh, they don't look like, they're not really woody, they're more corky. And um, anyway, so they break really easy. But um, I do have one growing over uh, behind my, my succulent garden. And I'll show that to you another time when it's in bloom. It's really spectacular actually. Um, this would be a, um, jasmine bush <laughs> thank you jasmine vine and this is mother-in-law tongue um i love this one um this one is when it when it blooms it has like a shoot that comes out the the center it's um got like a red bloom spiky tongue <laughs> like your mother-in-law and also i have a goldfish um uh, plant here um which is a real glossy green um, plant and when it's in bloom I only have one example here but it, it looks like a little goldfish it's usually bigger than that but this is um, a really pretty plant I've had it for years um, and uh, over here this is what my friend Glenda just uh, 
brought over. It's a sizzle frizzle. It's from South Africa and um, it's a very unique plant. Um, if you keep it in the sun, the foliage will grow like this in, in curlicues. If you put it in the shade, it won't, it'll more be more straight. But the um, shoot that comes out the middle is um, kind of pretty. It's yellow, um, but it smells like vanilla. So it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Love this. And on the same vein, I have another friend that brought me over a butterfly bush that I put in this pot here. And this one is a uh, corkscrew rush. And this one is um, a real interesting looking succulent as well and um, fairly indestructible. You know, all you have to do is remember to water it. So I think that about does it for my back patio, my succulent garden. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye.